Good evening and salutations, my J fans. This episode was kind of a mixed bag. Um, you had Anna asking TJ, you know, where is Jordan at? And TJ gets a little nervous and concerned and stuff like that. And then Jordan just shows up. And part of me was kind of disappointed because I was just like, okay, maybe she's like held captive somewhere and, you know, they got to sit there and try to look for her. And when she showed up, it was just like, huh, and she's like totally fine. Okay. Um, but, you know, she lies to TJ saying that she was somewhere. I can't remember where she was. And that's the reason why she was wearing the same clothes. And apparently it was enough for TJ to buy, or at least I guess bought. He went up leaving. And Anna told, you know, what really wound up happening. That she got nabbed by two FBI agents, which, by the way, at the time, she didn't even know that they were FBI agents. They just kind of grabbed her, and she just kind of just went with them like a dancer in distress. Anyway, they snipped their question in her, and basically telling her to just drop it, drop the investigation, leave it alone, point blank, period. At one point, she was like, Wondering, like, how far were they willing to go to sit there and keep her quiet? Some person from behind the door kind of, like, you know, told one of them to come in, put the fear of God into one of the agents, and the energy just changed. They just let it go. They was like, hey, listen, there's a car out there for you. Just, you know, leave and leave this thing alone. Of course, Jordan is not going to do that. So... I guess she's going to really sit there and find out how far are these people willing to go to um, keep whatever this is, you know, secret. I just kind of thought it was going to be a little bit more danger, and it was just like, oh, it was just the FBI. And now I'm thinking about it, she's like, well, how far are they willing to sit there and go to, um, you know, keep this quiet? I'm like, it's the FBI. How, how far do you think they're going to go? If these were mysterious people, that would have been one thing, but... I, 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 okay. I'm trying to stick with whatever this story is going, but whatever. Um, you got Trina that's kind of worried about leaving going to Paris because, you know, Curtis may or may not walk and, you know, how she going to sit there and be there for him and, you know, she's going to be worried about him the whole time. Of course, we're not sitting there worried about Taggart, but let, listen, at, somebody got to sit there and, and say this man's name because, well, they're clearly not going to do that. But of course, Portia tells him to go, tells her to go, and she's like, you know, listen, I may not like Spencer, but you're happy with him and... It is what it is. Meanwhile, you got Hat Daddy that's not there, you know, talking to Stella about Curtis and about what might have happened. And, you know, Stella at this point is like, let's just drop it. It was too much eggnog or whatever. Let's just kind of let this go. And, you know, Marshall's like, no, we're not. We're not going to sit there and try to act like we're not having moments. So we, we're going to get to that. May not be today, but we're going to get to that. Anyway, long story short, Curtis brings the family in the room and just lets them know, listen, no matter which way this this, this surgery goes, um, we're going to be okay, you know? Doctor comes in, starts doing the examination, which is really odd because I didn't really understand why the family needed to be there. Um, I mean... Not so much why the family need to be there. I just feel like it just added more stress on Curtis. You know, Curtis is already sent to talking to his dad, hoping that the surgery went well. So this way, you know, it wouldn't let everyone down. So, I mean, I understand the support, but I just felt like if it was a different person, I felt like it would have been a little bit too much. Anyway, they start checking his feet. And, you know, with the body band or whatever. And at first, it was nothing. But of course, he felt something the second time he poked him in a different area. And again, I've 
had a mixed reaction because, you know, on one hand, you want to be like, oh, man, that's so great. You know, he has feeling. Maybe he could sit down and walk again, of course. But then I have the other reaction of how does that look for a person who is in a wheelchair their whole life? How do you think that makes them feel? I mean, at the end of the day, you can't please everyone. So their decision to sit there and make Curtis walk again, it is what it is. Um, I mean, hell, if he wasn't able to sit there and walk again, you would have more people, then you would have other people who would have been upset. So it, it's not exactly a win-win situation, but I thought about that and I was like, hmm. I can see the other side of that. So, Marty and Lucy. You know, Marty snipped there asking, like, why do you keep snipped there looking at Scott, Scotty for, like, what's, what's, what's going on with you two? And Lucy tries to talk it up to, oh, you're just being secure, this, that, and the third. Just kind of brushing his... You know, his question is his concern aside, but there's one point where they're talking and she says that I used to love you. And when Marty was like, no, that's when he, never mind. Then when she went into the bathroom and he followed her in there and I'm just like, um, you couldn't just wait until she came outside. What if somebody else was there? Anyway, he goes into the bathroom and he's like, yo, listen, I need you to sit there and tell me right now. You know my history, my exes. Um, so I want to feel like you're different, but you need to be honest with me. And that's when she slips up and says something along the lines of, you know, when I used to love you or something. And Marty was like, yeah, okay. And he just walked out. And Lucy got upset. And I sat there and I was just like, you know... You clearly want to get back at Tracy, and it's more important for you to get back at Tracy than it is to be with Marty. So that's where your priorities are, fine. But you don't sit there and get to cry and 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 whine about your mascara and everything like that. And you put yourself in that situation. You chose revenge and to get back full control of your company as opposed to being with your man. Which, in all reality, you could have just sat there and told him the truth. I don't understand why he can, why she can sit there and tell him the truth. Is that supposed to be your partner, your partner for life or whatever? Or however this is supposed to work, you would sit there and think that you'd be able to trust him along enough to be like, hey, listen, let me sit there and tell you, you know, what's going on. And if he's going to ride with you, he's going to ride with you. If not, then, you know, you got to make a choice. But... She seemed like she did make a choice. Meanwhile, you got Scotty um, trying to woo Tracy. Gregory comes in. They're talking for a little bit. And Scotty the whole time keeps looking back at Lucy and Marty to see what's going on with them. He leaves. He goes into the restroom. And, you know, he sees her crying and everything like that. They get into some sort of minor argument she's just more disappointed like yo you're not you're not there getting the job done you you in here snip their BS and with me and towards the end he went up she went up using his credit card to send a bunch of roses to her place which I'm just like they're still going with this hair brain scheme okay sure whatever now at some point I did sit there and say yeah Gregory was was showed up and he looked, you know, he was sitting there looking at those two like they were on a date or whatever. Um, at some point, you know, Gregory comes back and he look, He says that he has some, some sort of heartburn or whatever. Tracy, I guess somehow, I don't exactly remember, but she somehow followed him or she saw him in the lobby. And apparently he couldn't move. You know, he looked at Tracy, he was like, you know, because Tracy was like, what's going on? He was like, I can't move. But then she helped him to, you know, like the couch or whatever. And so part of me was just like, not to sound ignorant or anything like that, but you just said that you couldn't move like you were paralyzed. 
And I don't know how ALS works. You know, maybe he just, he couldn't really move like he lost his balance. But, you know, she was able to help him to the couch or whatever. And again, this is one of those things where it's like, this is why I really like Tracy in a lot of ways. Because Tracy could be a very nasty, wicked, spiteful, mean-spirited, Karen-like, bougie-ass woman. But then she can be very compassionate, very sweet, and understanding. And this is what you see in the scene with, with Gregory. Um, even fires him up or whatever. Because, you know, they're talking about um, Brooklyn and Chase's wedding. And, you know, he wants it to be perfect. He wants the infighting between Tracy and, and um, Lucy. I mean, Tracy and um, Olivia to stop or whatever. And just focus on the wedding. And he even gets... You know, she even gets Yuri or whatever to pick him up in the car um, to drive him back where he needs to go. By the way, I never actually had an Uber driver um, not find my place ever. But I mean, there was a scene with Portia and Liz, but they didn't really do much. They just kind of caught up. Pretty much just kind of letting the fans know what's been going on between Curtis and Ben and the lawsuit and everything, which this is where the last part of this video comes in, which is Ben and Liz. Ben going to a meeting to sit there and kind of discuss his feelings about if he loses his license, how it's a big important identity of his, his life and his passion and stuff like that and what it means for him, what it means for his sobriety. Um, and the reason why I got into this part last is because it was, in some way, it was kind of meaningful because it, it gets the viewers to really see how much, you know, this lawsuit is really affecting him and what it could really cost him, what it means for him moving forward. You know, he's like, being a dad is my first passion, but of course, my identity, but also being a doctor. So I get that part. But then I'm also just like, are we going to get to this lawsuit at this point? Because it's like, you know, Liz was like, you know, listen, we can't really do much into X, Y, and Z, so you might as well go to a meeting. And it's also just like, well, we got you on contract or whatever, and, you, you know, you got to appear in a certain amount of episodes, so we'll just have you go to a meeting and share your thoughts. And uh, it wasn't terrible, but it was also one of those things where it's like, I could have did without the scene, to be honest. I know Liz and Finn get a lot of slack for being boring, for not having any chemistry, and on and on and on and on and on. And I can get the boring for her. Trust me, I can I can definitely get that. But it was just one of those things where it's like, I could have not seen that, and I would have been fine. Either way. Oh, that's not the last part, damn. Last part was Trace. The last part was Brooklyn and Chase at the um, Axstrong place. You know, Brooklyn fired up at Tracy. I mean, fired up at Lucy for really coming down on um, Tracy. And I didn't. You know, the thing is, the way that Brooklyn laid out Tracy's plan was very, I guess, cheesy sounds diabolical. She said the most hurtful things to Tracy to spotlight on how much Tracy is hurting and how alone she is and to make her really vulnerable for Scotty to come in and swoop her off her feet, marry her, and then to get rid of him would have to, you know, give up her shares or whatever, which he would give back to Lucy. You know, granted, I didn't realize at the time that that's what she was doing. Hell, I don't even know if the writers, I'm going to be honest, I don't even know if the writers actually thought, oh, she said all those mean and awful things to hurt Tracy so much to a point 
where she would be vulnerable to have Scotty come in. I felt like it was just one of those arguments with, where Lucy just went too far. I, I don't I don't feel like the writers was like I almost feel like the writers was like, oh yeah, we can we can use that to sit there and kind of kind of further this, this this little plan that Lucy and Scotty has against Tracy. I felt like that was kind of just a one off sort of argument and then it just triggered into something else. And maybe on Lucy then that's um what it was. But I don't know. I feel like they kind of just like threw that other part of the plan into it just as a last minute sort of thing. But yeah, you know, she's fired up. She's throwing an axe at the target, imagining um, Tracy's face. That was it. That was that was that was pretty much about it. Um, another scene I could have been. Well, actually, tell you, the truth, I guess that I guess they needed that scene to explain that part of Lucy's plan. Which, by the way, I still felt like what she did, what she said, was out of pocket. It really was. It, it was one of those things. It was like I, I cannot like somebody, but there are certain lines that I don't cross because I got to look myself in the mirror and be like, that wasn't a good look. Okay, uh, I feel like that's pretty much about it. I can't think of anything else that wound up happening, but I always sit there and say, come to the live stream tonight, 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific. We'll sit there and talk about all the shows, General Hospital, Days of Our Lives, Born and Beautiful, Young and Restless. With that being said, I'll see you in the next video.